Wake Up People by Heem the Music Monsters here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Juan? Well, John McCain's time as a POW during the Vietnam War is back at the center of attention with the release of a 1967 interview of him while he was bedridden and imprisoned in Vietnam. The interview by reporter Francois Chalet originally aired on French television in 1968. The French National Audiovisual Archive posted the interview on its website Wednesday, and some of the footage was also picked up by the McCain campaign. The interview shows an emotional McCain describing how his aircraft was shot down while, while he was bombing Hanoi in 1967. Well, McCain's years as a prisoner of war and his return home as a war hero have been a central part of his political image. But there's another part of the story that's rarely been told, and that has to do with the POWs who were left behind in Vietnam and never released back to the United States. An investigation by veteran journalist Sidney Schamberg reveals John McCain, quote, worked very hard to hide from the public stunning information about American prisoners in Vietnam who, unlike him, didn't return home. Schamberg's report was published in the October 6th issue of The Nation magazine. It's called Why Has John McCain Blocked Info on MIAs? Award-winning journalist Sidney Schamberg joins us here in the Firehouse studio. Welcome to Democracy Now! Well, tell us the whole story as you understand it, Sid Schamberg. Well, it's a long and complicated story, but I'll try to do it in brief. Uh, in 1973, we were at the uh, early 73, we were at the uh, negotiating table with the Hanoi government. And uh, we weren't doing very well. We bombed them in December of 1972 to try to get them to be more reasonable. Uh, that didn't happen. They were going to stick it out and stick to their positions. And one of their positions was that they linked the uh, prisoner issue very, very closely to the issue of, repatri of, of reconstruction money reparations. And they never let those two be separated. Uh, so when it came down to us pushing for a final version of this uh, treaty, uh, they refused to tell us before we signed how many prisoners they were returning. And we accepted that condition. It was said they would tell us after we signed. So we signed, and they gave us a list, which had 591 names on it. This astounded people in our intelligence community, because their list showed several hundred more. And there was this back and forth that the American public never saw, because it took place at higher levels. Nixon wrote a letter to Van Van Dong, the prime minister, in which he said, uh, we have, in Laos alone, a list of 311 prisoners held alive. And you are sending back nine prisoners from Laos. Quote, that is inconceivable. That's what he wrote. And it was inconceivable. But when it came time to explain to the American people whether we were getting all of our prisoners back, Nixon went to the television set and gave a national speech on television saying all of our prisoners are on their way home. He knew that was a lie. Now, I don't know what was in Nixon's head or Kissinger's head. Maybe they thought they could get them back later. But our position was no ransom. And so there never was any ransom, unlike the French, who after the def their defeat at Dien Bien Phu, they had many, many soldiers held back, all of whom uh, well, I don't know if it's all of whom, but most of whom were ransomed, privately, secretly, by back-channel sources and so forth. But that's how they got out. And we refused, and there were several ransom offers, and they were never made public. In fact, Richard Allen testified under oath. He was the National Security Advisor in the Reagan administration, and he testified under oath behind closed doors, again, not seen by the American public, that prisoners, uh, that there was a ransom offer in early 1972, and that nothing was done about it. And, uh, and on and on and on. But you but say that a meeting was held between Reagan, Vice President George H.W. Bush, CIA Director William Casey, Allen as well, the National Security Advisor, uh, to discuss this issue of the ransom to get some of these, you estimate, what, over 1,200 American prisoners? Yeah, well, the principal, the real reason why we know about that meeting is that a Secret Service officer 
who was doing some wiring for some uh, sensory equipment that he was setting up in the White House overheard the conversation and uh, was horrified by it because they were obviously not going to do anything about this. And nobody knew at that time that there were, you know, most of America thought everybody had come home. And in fact, the, the thing that I should probably have mentioned first is that the, the uh, there was this story that the whole thing was a myth, a hoax, a right-wing hoax. And liberals chose to believe that. Or they were, you can say they were misled and accepted it. You know, we live in an area of mythology. We've been lied to regularly. We now see that we've been, we were lied to even at, to a greater degree about the Iraq war than anybody ever imagined or ever any thought that it was capable of the White House. And, um, and most people who respond, for example, to my story, I mean, a lot of people uh, uh, with this can't be. This just can't be. We, we would know about it by now, or we would, you well, know, the truth is that, that there is, I wouldn't, I can't write this because I can't prove it. But there are reports which have a strong level of belief from Laotians that they have talked to right now men who are still there alive well, 35 years later. But now, what about, because obviously after uh, Nixon and Gerald Ford, uh, Jimmy Carter came in, what, what have the Democrats uh, done on this issue at all, or did they ignore it as well? They, the Democrats ignored it. It was, it was not, first of all, uh, high on their priorities. And secondly, to, to dig into this, one, they would have to disrupt the entire government establishment before and after whatever presidency it was. In other words, every national security advisor from Nixon on, this has gone across seven presidencies. Every president, every national security advisor, uh, every secretary of state probably knows about this. Now, two secretaries of defense testified at committee hearings in the open, on television, under oath, that men were left behind. That was done in 1992. The press never touched it. That's another piece of the story. The mainstream press ran away from this story. What was the reason? Well, they, uh, they were being accused of having lost Vietnam. In other words, they, they wrote, the, the, the Republicans or the conservatives were saying, you lost Vietnam, like who lost China? in pre years previous. And then, and John McCain's role in all of this? John McCain's role is harder to divine the reasons for. But John McCain, uh, there is, there's always been talk, and there's evidence to, to suggest that it, there is truth in this, but it's in his head, and only he and his psychiatrist, if he has one, know that he, that he his reasons are that if the North, if the Vietnamese were to release all the information they have on him, the full text of his confessions, how he lived, the details, because there have been stories, again, just rumors, that he was provided with a woman companion, and all kinds of things like that, which, which are, can't be considered as fact because they've never been confirmed, and very, very difficult, if not impossible, to confirm. Uh, and there have you know, even been rumors that he had an agreement, an understanding with the Vietnamese, that he would do everything to get their nation uh, uh, recognized in the international network and get them uh, our diplomatic relations, ours, the, the United States relations restored, which he did, if they would never release his information. None of his military records have ever been released, and there's been no pressure to do so. And that's just his military records, where he was a sort of a screw-up pilot, you know, crashing three planes while not on combat duty, but just in training. Uh, uh, and everybody knows that, everybody who ever worked with him, and they don't consider that dishonorable, but they also say that if he hadn't, if he hadn't been the son of the rear admiral, who was commander-in-chief Pacific, uh, his, you know, his father, uh, John Sidney McCain II, uh, that he would have been bounced. 
Sid Schamberg is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, won the Pulitzer for his coverage of Cambodia. The film Killing Field is based on his work there. Um, tell us about the Senate POW committee that John McCain served on and the sister of a missing airman who came forward, Dolores uh, Alfond, her testimony and what happened. Well, the committee the committee was formed because there was a resurgence of 